Today we have a CME on approach to pain abdomen and this is a very important topic because in every OPD and also in emergency we come across in the patients of pain abdomen. Therefore it becomes essential to have a discussion on this important topic. So today is 6 February 2024 and we are having a CME on approach to pain abdomen. How to approach pain abdomen? This is the topic of discussion for uh, this uh, CNA. So, first of all, we must know the different causes of pain abdomen according to the location wise. And once we are able to delineate the cause from by location wise, then, then we can accordingly examine the patient and also go for the uh, investigations and ultimately for the treatment. So, approach to the pain abdomen will be discussed under heading side causes of causes of pain abdomen pain abdomen location by Then <coughs> investigation and thirdly, sorry, then examination, examination of patients, and when I say examination, examination is always preceded by history taking. So history taking is also important. Then investigation. And finally treatment. We will primarily focus on this one in this year. Because examination you are supposed to know how to do examination, abdominal examination by yourself and we will be talking some few points regarding this investigation and treatment of individual cases is beyond the scope of this CME. Although when we are able to know the particular uh, cause of pain abdomen then it becomes very easy to treat and we shall be able to uh, handle the cases uh, in the subsequent classes. Uh, as per the uh, need of the, the CME. So, first of all, we should start with the <coughs> college of pain abdomen location wise. So, location, there, there can be seven kinds of location. First is right, upper, quadrant quadrant second is epigastric or epigastrium means epigastric pain and third will be left upper quadrant left upper quadrant Similarly, on the right side, left side, there will be left upper quadrant third fourth quadrant. Okay, sorry. Left upper quadrant, left upper quadrant, and there will be right 
लोअर क्वाड्रेंट राइट लोअर क्वाड्रेंट क्वाड्रेंट देन देर विल बी पेरी अम्बेरिकल देर विल बी कॉरेस्पॉन्डेंट कॉरेस्पॉन्डिंग राइट अपर क्वाड्रेंट राइट अपर क्वाड्रेंट एपिगेस्ट्रियम लेफ्ट अपर क्वाड्रेंट लेफ्ट लोअर क्वाड्रेंट राइट लोअर क्वाड्रेंट पेरी पेरी अम्बेरिकल लेफ्ट लोअर क्वाड्रेंट एंड सेवन विल बी डिफ्यूज नॉन लोकलाइज पे सो पेरी अम्बेरिकल पेरी अम्बेरिकल then left lower quadrant lower quadrant quadrant and seventh will be diffuse non localized diffuse non localized pain here i will so we have to know about different causes of pain according to location so when we know different causes then it becomes very very easy to treat the investigate and treat so the major purpose of uh, this cme is to know different causes of pain abdomen according to location wise so we have seven important locations right upper quadrant epigastrium left upper quadrant right lower quadrant peri umbilical left lower quadrant and diffuse non localized pain abdomen so we should know about cause different causes and when we know the causes then it is it becomes very easy to examine investigate and treat so right upper quadrant first is cholecystitis cholecystitis this cystitis this important cause of pain in right upper quadrant second is cholangitis cholangitis what is cholangitis inflammation of common bladder this is inflammation of gallbladder then pancreatitis pancreatitis one thing very important to know about pancreatitis that pain of pancreatitis is felt in right upper quadrant epigastrium as well as left upper quadrant so pancreatitis pneumonia pneumonia oblique empyema pleurisy inflammation of pleura pleurisy or pleurodynia when it causes pleurisy <coughs> called pleurodynia pain arising from pleura is called pleurodynia then sub diaphragmatic abscess sub diaphragmatic abscess sub diaphragmatic abscess <coughs> then hepatitis hepatitis and bird chiari syndrome bird chiari syndrome we should at least know all the things even if we are not able to do all things in our day to day practice but at least we should know these are the different causes of right upper quadrant abdominal pain cholecystitis we all know cholangitis pancreatitis pneumonia empyema pleurisy pleurodynia sub diaphragmatic abscess abscess below the diaphragm that is also the cause of right upper quadrant pain 
hepatitis, pain of hepatitis, and bird shear syndrome. See, these are the important causes of right upper quadrant. Now coming to the causes of pain abdomen in epigastrium. So, peptic ulcer disease, gastritis, jerk, pancreatitis. Now, myocardial infarction. Myocardial infarction. Pain of myocardial infarction is also felt in epigastria. Pain of pericarditis. Pericarditis. Diitis. That is also felt in epigastrium, epigastric region and ruptured aortic aneurysm ruptured pain of uh, ruptured aortic aneurysm is also felt in epigastrium although Every earth pain has some other associated symptoms and characteristics on the basis of which you can delineate one from another. Pain of ruptured aortic aneurysm will go to the back and you will find the patient is having shock because of the ruptured aortic aneurysm. And this is esophagitis, inflammation of esophagus. So these are the important causes of pain abdomen in epigastrium. Peptic ulcer disease, gastritis, gastroesophageal reflux disease, pancreatitis, myocardial infarction, pericarditis, ruptured aortic aneurysm, and esophagitis. Now coming to the next, because the more differential diagnosis you will be having in your mind the lesser will be the chances of missing out any important diagnosis and it is very essential you, that you should know the causes of pain abdomen in different location and now the third one is left upper quadrant What is most important the structure in the left upper quadrant? It is the spleen. So we have a splenic infarction. Number two, splenic rupture. We have a splenic. We have also fundus of the stomach. <coughs> stomach is also there in the left upper quadrant. So, gastritis, gastritis, gastric ulcer, gastric ulcer. I have already told it that in uh, pain of pancreatitis is felt in all the upper quadrant. 
so there will be pancreatitis pancreatitis and subdiaphragmatic ulcers subdiaphragmatic abscess abscess so splenic infarction a splenic rupture splenic abscess gastritis gastric ulcer pancreatitis and subdiaphragmatic abscess these are the important causes of pain in the left upper quadrant of the abdomen now the right lower quadrant right lower quadrant what will be the causes appendicitis appendicitis number 2 there is fallopian tube on the uh, left uh, right lower as well so salpingitis salpingitis inguinal hernia inguinal hernia ectopic pregnancy ectopic pregnancy pregnancy nephro lithi acid irritable बावल सिंड्रोम मेसेंट्रिक लिंफ एडिनाइटिस नंबर थ्री स्टिफ लाइटिस व्हाट इज स्टिफ लाइटिस इंफ्लामेशन ऑफ सीकम inflammation of cecum is called tiflitis so these are the important causes of right lower quadrant and you can easily remember these things what is what is most important structure in the right lower quadrant which causes pain appendicitis or we all know salpingitis fallopian tube right fallopian tube salpingitis inguinal hernia inguinal hernia when it becomes strangulated it can cause pain so inguinal hernia ectopic pregnancy ectopic pregnancy especially ruptured ectopic pregnancy that can also cause right lower quadrant pain we should suspect this case in female patient comes in the abdomen in the emergency department with pain abdomen then ruptured ectopic pregnancy should also be in our mind and that's why it is very important to know the important causes then you will be not missing because our mind our eye sees what our mind already knows so therefore it is necessary to educate our mind that in a case of women presenting with pain abdomen in emergency that is not always because of the gastritis that can be a ruptured ectopic accordingly we have to investigate and know the cause ectopic pregnancy nephrolithiasis pain of renal stone renal colic can be felt in the right side also and left side also so therefore there will be um, common thing and on both side irritable bowel syndrome pain of the irritable bowel syndrome in fact pain of irritable bowel syndrome is found throughout the abdomen right lower right as well as left <laughs> lower also because we have bowel in the right side and left side also and mesenteric lymphadenitis this pain is usually found in the uh, right side mesenteric lymphadenitis and tiflitis it is the inflammation of cecum therefore we we'll, therefore it will be found in the uh, uh, right side so this pain salpingitis 
inguinal hernia, ectopic pregnancy, and nephrolithiasis, and irritable bowel syndrome. These four are common in the left side also. But before that, we have to go to peri umbilical. Peri umbilical causes of pain. Patient presenting with peri umbilical pain for few minutes that can be a case of appendicitis, especially in teenage girls presenting with peri umbilical pain of few minutes duration. That might be a case of early appendicitis, which will later on shift to the right lower quadrant. So, early appendicitis, the pain will be in peri umbilical area. Second, Gastroenteritis. Even pain of gastroenteritis can be very umbilical. Bowel obstruction. Bowel obstruction. Even the intestinal obstruction cases can present with very umbilical pain. So, bowel obstruction and also. The ruptured aortic aneurysm. aneurysm. So, these are the four important causes of peri umbilical pain. Number one is early appendicitis. Number two is gastroenteritis. Number three is bowel obstruction. And number four is ruptured aortic aneurysm pain can be felt in epigastry as well as in peri umbilical area. Okay, and now the causes of pain in left lower quadrant. Left lower. So important thing in this class, the right lower quadrant, the most important cause of pain was appendicitis. In the left side it is diverticulitis. Okay. It is diverticulitis in case of left lower abdomen. Because uh, uh, you might be, uh, have learned in embryology. Uh, what was the name of the diverticulum? Meckel's diverticulum. diverticulum. It, was, it is the Meckel's diverticulum that is <coughs> found in the left side and its inflammation causes diverticulitis. So, left lower quadrant most important cause of pain will be diverticulitis. Okay. Number two will be there will be salpingitis. Salpingitis. There will be inguinal hernia, there will be ectopic pregnancy, ectopic pregnancy, nephrolithiasis, nephrolithiasis, nephrolithiasis. Irritable, irritable bowel syndrome, and inflammatory, inflammatory 
ਬਾਬਰ ਵੀ ਸੋ ਦੀ ਆਰ ਦਾ ਕੋਜ਼ ਜੋ ਪੇਨ ਐਂਡ ਬਮਨੀ ਇਰੀਟੇਬਲ ਬਾਵਲ ਸਿੰਡਰੋਮ ਐਂਡ ਇਨ ਰਾਈਟ ਲੋਅਰ ਕੁਆਡਰੈਂਟ देयर वाज ओनली ए देयर वाज ओनली इरिटेबल बावल सिंड्रोम बट यू शुड रिमेंबर दैट इन्फ्लेमेटरी बावल डिजीज पेन ऑफ इन्फ्लेमेटरी बावल डिजीज इज यूजुअली फाउंड इन द लेफ्ट लोअर क्वाड्रेंट लेफ्ट लोअर लोअर क्वाड्रेंट सो दीज आर द इंपॉर्टेंट कॉजेस ऑफ पेन इन लेफ्ट लोअर क्वाड्रेंट दे आर कॉमन थिंग्स यूनिक इज डायवर्टिकुलाइटिस नाउ सर्पिंजाइटिस because uh, fallopian tube inflammation of fallopian tube is called sarpingitis so it is will be also found in the left side inguinal hernia can be happen in the left side also ectopic pregnancy there is left as well nephrolithiasis pain of uh, and irritable bowel syndrome pain of irritable bowel syndrome is found in the, in the left as well as right and inflammatory bowel disease happens in the left side pain of the inflammatory bowel disease usually crohn's colitis and ulcerative colitis pain is found in the left lower quadrant and now the diffuse non localized localized pain cause of diffuse non localized abdominal pain means the pain will be found throughout the abdomen patient will uh, express like this the pain is happening here and here he will not be able to localize so what are the important causes number one will be gastroenteritis gastroenteritis gas pain of gastroenteritis can be very amenable as well as diffuse throughout the abdomen gastroenteritis mesentery teri ischemia one should also think about mesentery ischemia is important for although we can miss it but we should keep in mind that a pain abdomen of few uh, days duration or even few months duration and that is not getting relieved by usual medications of uh, uh, h pylori eradication and uh, antacids and patient is not uh, still uh, responding especially in uh, middle age patient or older patient in which atherosclerosis uh, diabetic and hypertension patient then we should think about mesenteric ischemia as there is cardiac ischemia myocardial ischemia there can be ischemia in the mesentery and that also causes diffuse localized pain because mesentery is all everywhere in the abdomen so mesenteric ischemia bowel obstruction bowel obstruction pain of bowel obstruction can also be uh, it can be peri american and also diffuse throughout the abdomen irritable bowel syndrome as we have just talked about that the pain of uh, irritable bowel syndrome is found in the left lower quadrant as well as the right lower quadrant and it can be diffuse throughout the abdomen it can be non localized also irritable bowel syndrome then pain of peritonitis pain of peritonitis okay pain of peritonitis is, will also be diffuse and non localized now the diabetes in which condition of diabetes we, we have pain abdomen usually yes it is diabetic ketoacidosis which we call in short in dk there is also pain abdomen and that pain abdomen will be non localized so a patient of diabetes whose blood sugar is not controlled and he is having pain abdomen we should suspect about 
diabetic ketoacidosis. So diabetes. Now another important cause of diffuse localized pain, malaria. Malaria. Malaria is also very important cause specific of pain abdomen. We, sh we should keep in mind. Malaria also causes pain abdomen and that is diffuse non-localized. But there will be also associated fever malaria like hepatosplenomegaly, duration of fever, there will be putoidian or tertian fever like that. So accordingly, but we should know first of all that malaria can cause pain abdomen. And there are some uh, rare causes like we should at least know familial medi Terranian fever, familiar Mediterranean fever, some metabolic disorders, meta metabolic disorders, disorders like phenylketonuria, porphyria, porphyria also causes pain of the way. Important metabolic cause should be remembered as porphyria. There will be cutaneous sensitivity to the patient and uh, pain abdomen. So, metabolic disorders and some psychiatric conditions. Psychiatric conditions, psychiatric disorders. <coughs> In psychiatric disorders, also, patient will complain of diffuse localized pain. And we have to judge what is the cause. So, diffuse non localized pain. In gastroenteritis, there can be diffuse which we come across very commonly gastroenteritis the pain of gastroenteritis is diffuse non localized in mesenteric ischemia that will be non localized bowel obstruction patient of bowel obstruction can also have diffuse non localized pain as also very result irritable bowel syndrome the pain of irritable bowel syndrome can be diffuse it can be left lower left uh, right lower quadrant Peritonitis. Yes, this is very important because of diffuse non diffuse non localized pain. Peritonitis, pain of diabetes means diabetic ketoacidosis and uh, malaria, Mediterranean fever and metabolic disorders and psychiatric disorders. So these are the complete list of causes of pain abdomen according to location wise. And you should remember these causes uh, and. And it is it will be very easy to remember these causes according to the organs there. If there is uh, pain abdomen is in left upper quadrant, so we should think about spleen, we should think about pancreas, we should think about the stomach, and accordingly we can and invest examine as well as investigate and ultimately treat the patients. Now I will be just telling about other things in the my major purpose of today's CME was to, to teach you people that you should know at least different causes of pain abdomen according to location wise. And once you know these things, then I am absolutely confident about your ability to further investigate and delineate the cause and go to the treatment. Therefore, second part will be examination and definitely examination is preceded by examination is preceded by history taking so i'm not going to uh, tell about these things but few important points regarding examination which you should know although we don't do it for some practical reasons or for our own in own hesitation that no examination of abdomen is complete without uh, rectal examination no exam rectal and pelvic examination without pelvic and rectal examinations no examination of abdomen is complete so we should at least know about this and third part is investigation I will be telling few points regarding this investigation part so first of all there will be laboratory investigation laboratory investigation 
and second and second will be imaging imaging based investigation and third is exploratory laparoscopy laparotomy as well as laparoscopy was is laparotomy was earlier the method of exploring the uh, abdomen but now we do laparoscopy because it is uh, technology based and easily done and there is no trauma to the patient and patient can be discharged on the same day and laparoscopy 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 so laboratory investigation imaging and laparoscopy now few important point regarding the laboratory investigation we do cbc and definitely urinalysis urinalysis means that we do routine examination of urine and uh, renal function test means routine examination of urine urine and kft so important thing regarding this one in cbc when the wbc count is more than 20000 per microliter then it usually indicates perforation of the gut the most common region for leukocytosis especially more than 20000 per microliter it usually indicates gut perforation perforation of a viscous so definitely hollow perforation takes place in the hollow viscera uh, that is gut uh, but uh, more than 20000 uh, wbc count can also be found in cholecystitis pancreatitis peripheral um, pelvic inflammatory disease and intestinal infarction also so you should know when the WBC count comes more than 20,000 in a patient of pain abdomen, then we should suspect viscous perforation, viscous perforation, cholecystitis, cholecystitis, pancreatitis, pancreatitis, and intestinal infarction, intestinal infarction. So these are the important causes of more than 20,000 WBC. Discuss perforation, cholecystitis, pancreatitis, intestinal infarction. And by doing urinalysis, you can rule out um, uh, urinary infection. You can uh, rule out uh, some renal disease. You can rule out even the diagnosis because uh, diabetes because in routine examination uh, many times we find sugar as well as albumin so that can be a basis of uh, ruling out and uh, one important thing that uh, i was no, i had not included in the peri umbilical part uh, uh, was that in peri umbilical area also includes the supra pubic area so uti in women is also a very important cause of pain abdomen in peri umbilical or supra pubic region. So, you should also know that abdominal pain in UTI, in male also there can be UTI, although it is common in women. So, this is about lab investigation. Now, some important points regarding imaging part. In imaging, we do X ray. And X ray also study uh, includes barium or water soluble soluble contrast a study of upper GI tract upper gas GI tract X ray. We do X-ray in our emergency setup, upright posture, or sometimes in lateral leg press posture to rule out uh, intestinal obstruction. So upright 
uh, X-ray, but it is not very important when you suspect appendicitis or strangulated in vinal hernia. Suppose there is a patient of having bulging of uh, some content in the inguinal region and patient is having excruciating pain, then there is no need to do X-ray. And also if the patient is having very intense pain, a young uh, girl or teenage girl is having pain in right lower quadrant and you are for sure that is a case of appendicitis, then there is no need to do X-ray. And uh, barium study or water soluble contrast study of upper GI tract is done to rule out partial intestinal obstruction. To rule out partial bowel obstruction when other means of examination, other means of investigation fail to establish the diagnosis like X-ray. When the patient X-ray shows no uh, air fluid level and still you suspect there is obstruction in the gut, then you can do barium study or water soluble contrast study of, study of the upper GI tract. But when there is your suspicion of colonic obstruction, then this barium study or water soluble contrast study is not done. In case of colonic obstruction, we do contrast enema. And in case of colonic perforation, there is no uh, uh, contrasted study is done at all. So, in case of uh, bowel obstruction, we, we can do barium or water soluble contrast study. And in case of when we suspect colonic obstruction, then we don't do barium or contrast study, instead, we do contrast enema. So, this is about X ray. Now, next thing it will be USC. As we know that what are the important conditions that USG can catch through the so USG can do can delineate an enlarged gallbladder gallstone and enlarged pancreas even so it can delineate an ovarian cyst it can delineate <coughs> a topic pregnancy so these are the important things that USG does and now the next thing is CT what is the importance of doing CT scan CT scan can do some things which um, USG uh, fails to do so important things like besides what USG does, so uh, through CT scan we can delineate the splenic rupture, a splenic rupture, splenic abscess. Thickened appendiceal wall, thickened appendiceal wall and thickened colonic wall, and also there is a streaking of meso appendix and meso colon. A streaking, a streaking, a streaking of meso colon. Mesocolon and meso appendix. You should remember this. This can be asked in your neat examination also. CT scan can delineate a streaking of mesocolon. There will be streakness, uh, um, some uh, streaks means like this, which we call uh, some linear linear pattern. That is called a streaking. A streaking of mesocolon and a streaking of mesopendis. A streaking of mesocolon indi me indicates diverticulitis and a streaking of mesoappendix indicates appendicitis. So this is the CT scan finding of that it, it can CT scan can delineate thickened uh, intestinal wall, thickened in, thickened colonic wall, thickened 
एपेंडिसियल वॉल एंड स्ट्रीकिंग ऑफ मेसोकोलॉन एंड मेसो अपेंडिक्स एंड स्ट्रीकिंग ऑफ मेसोकोलॉन मीन्स डायबिटिकोलाइटिस एंड स्ट्रीकिंग ऑफ मेसोपेंडिक्स इज एपेंडिसाइटिस सो दीज आर दटल थिंग्स विच वी कैन मिस थ्रू द यू एस जी एंड बट यू कैन बी कॉट थ्रू द सी टी एस कैन now the another thing is laparoscopy uh one important thing in uh, imaging part itself that is there is hida scan that is called radio isotope hepatobiliary immunodiacetic acid scans so hida scan what is the importance of hida scan hida scan that is called radio isotopic hepatobiliary immunodiacetic acid scanning this hida scanning is done to differentiate cholecystitis from pancreatitis means to delineate pain of acute cholecystitis or biliary colic from pain of pancreatitis so this hida scan the importance of this hida scan is to delineate pain of cholecystitis or biliary or biliary colic from pancreatitis and now the laparoscopy laparoscopy means visualization of peritoneal cavity through a laparoscope and by means of doing we usually delineate through laparoscopy different pelvic conditions like salpingitis <coughs> sal salpingitis tubal pregnancy tubal pregnancy pregnancy ovarian cyst ovarian cyst and appendicitis even appendicitis can be explored through laparoscopy why do we do case in case of laparoscopy we is usually do it for pelvic conditions pelvic Conditions. Remember, laparoscopy in case of pain abdomen is usually done to rule out pelvic conditions. So, what are the important pelvic conditions that we can delineate through laparoscopy? It is salpingitis, tubal pregnancy, ovarian cyst, and appendicitis. So, these are the important things which we can delineate through laparoscopy. and uh, i already told about the hida scan which is a radio isotopic scanning uh, that is called hepatobiliary immunodiac immunodiacetic acid scanning and that differentiates uh, pain of cholecystitis from pain of pancreatitis so i believe the once we are able to do this much of uh, dif uh, differential diagnosis and their investigation then treatment part is not that much difficult because different different uh, causes we have already studied about peptic ulcer we have already studied about myocardial infarction or uh, jerd so different individual causes can be easily treated but most important thing that we should have in our mind different causes of pain abdomen uh, according to location wise and also what are the causes of diffuse non localized pain and in this manner we can investigate and ultimately approach to the diagnosis so this was a brief uh, cne on approach to pain abdomen and i believe this was some of is this was of some importance to you people and you must have learned something new today and i believe that you should go through this one uh, in your today after you will go go from this indoor duty so thank you for the for the day